I shall call no witnesses. This will be my testimony and my summation. Take the oath. Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God? I do. Thousands of years ago, the first man discovered how to make fire. He was probably burned at the stake he had taught his brothers to light, but he left them a gift they had not conceived, and he lifted darkness off the earth. Throughout the centuries, there were men who took first steps down new roads, armed with nothing but their own vision. The great creators, the thinkers, the artists, the scientists, the inventors, stood alone against the men of their time. Every new thought was opposed, every new invention was denounced. But the men of unborrowed vision went ahead. They fought, they suffered, and they paid, but they won. No creator was prompted by a desire to please his brothers. His brothers hated the gift he offered. His truth was his only motive. His work was his only goal.
Tonight we're doing some acoustics. We're calling them macabre minstrels. Hope you enjoy. Jeffrey down the blues. He's this man. 
remembering me right now. first cartoonist ever to be convicted of obscenity and the first cartoonist jailed for my artwork. I was charged with three counts of obscenity due to my comic zine Boiled Angel number seven and number eight. And hello again. Comic books, they aren't just for kids anymore. There's a whole new sort of comic written for adults. It's called The Zine. There are thousands of zine titles in print. Some have little to do with the traditional comic book view of truth, justice, and the American way. One in my hand here, it's called Boiled Angel. This got its creator into some mighty hot water. My art usually was kind of um, different. I thought of it being different than other people's. Michael Diana says he always used his art to shock people, even as a child. One assignment was to do a family portrait, and I drew the, our whole family nude. Nude people might be the tamest art you'll find in Diana's comic book series called Boiled Angel. Readers also see images of a boy raped by his dog, children adopted, then abused by their new parents, newborn babies tortured, then killed. Most of the people that see the art, I think, understand it some and enjoy it. I got a look at it and I knew right away that what I was looking at was obscenity. Former prosecutor Stuart Baggish says Michael Diana's art violates community standards. Baggish booked Michael Diana on obscenity charges, a crime with no precise definition. By law, folks in individual communities must decide what is obscene in their own hometowns. Pinellas County does not have to 
accept what is acceptable in the bathhouses of San Francisco and the crack alleys in New York. What's been marked as defendants exhibits 13... In court, prosecutors had to prove that Boiled Angel, taken as a whole, has no serious literary, scientific, artistic, or political value. And one of the issues that came out in the trial is it's not always the function of art to soothe or to simply depict comfortable situations. Sometimes art has to depict things that are very offensive, very horrifying. Oh, it all took place in Pinellas County. Which is where? Um, What's in New York? I live in Largo, and that's like a suburb of St. Petersburg. Oh, so it's really redneck, retired marine country. Yeah, mostly retired and church-going people. <coughs> and, um, well, I had been doing my Boiled Angels for about um, five years, and the police undercover, they had like an undercover sting operation in my post office box. Yes ordered number seven and eight, um, posing as um, a zine customer, someone who would normally be a fan of the magazine. And um, I sent them the, the books, the issues, and um, you know, next thing I knew, I was given a summons to appear in court to face three charges, um, three charges of obscenity. It was printing obscene material, distributing obscene material, and advertising for obscene material. Explain them, Mike. What what what's the inspiration for these drawings? Well, I get my a lot of my ideas from stuff I see on the TV news every night, things that happen in real life, um, things that bother me, and I can't ignore them. So I put them in my art mm -hmm. and show them to other people. You know kind of wake people up to what's going on around them. You have a lot of drawings that we can't even show on television, but they have uh, themes like abuse and rape and mutilation, dismemberment, um, kids being adopted and then abused and then abused by the dog. And I mean, and it got to a point where people thought you were waging a war on children. Well, it wasn't that. It's um, more like uh, practicing my right to free speech and my constitutional right to draw whatever I want as an artist. Now, and in Florida, um, middle of the Bible Belt, you know, that's a big problem with them. I can imagine all your, your blasphemy to God and, and Jesus in these things has a lot to do with that too. It, uh, it uh, smacks of Satanism. Well, I'm curious, um, for example, one of the reasons this is so controversial is that he is um, drawing things and not actually committing acts of violence. And some people, you know, l more liberal types, I guess, believe that he has the right in this country to draw it as long as he doesn't step over a line and actually commit the crimes. Um, what do you no, think about it? I disagree with that wholeheartedly. I, I believe in the freedom of speech, but when you begin to uh, deal with areas that uh, excite uh, uh, areas of the life that uh, are totally um, uh, criminal in effect and play upon that, then uh, I understand that his material is basically uh, on a pornographic level and uh, it excites uh, areas, unwholesome thoughts and ideas and the lives of others towards violent crimes and, and even the sacrifices of uh, uh, children or infants, I'm not sure to the, what, what extent. Um, well, I don't have anything to do with Satan. I don't believe in the devil. Um, as far as money goes, I didn't make anything at all on this. It actually cost me money between the printing and postage to send them out. So it was just, I did it because I was dedicated to it. Um, the artwork, I was working a 40 hour a week job and I'd go home and spend six or eight hours sometimes um, doing my artwork because it was something that I believed in and I wanted to do. The whole theme of this issue of number eight was cannibalism. Michael Diana says he gets his ideas from what he sees on the news and if his art is shocking it's only because it reflects what he sees happening in society every day. This comic got up my ass is about a boy that's molested by a priest and I got that idea from seeing countless uh, news reports about children being molested by priests and things. 
One thing you can say about that material is it is absolutely worthless. Diana went to jail for four days, was fined $3,000, and put on probation for three years. As part of his sentence also, the judge ordered him not to draw any more obscene art. I actually went to jail for a drawing. That's something I never thought I would actually have to go to jail for my artwork. The judge sentenced him to three years probation, fined him $3,000, ordered that he work full-time, do community service one day a week for three years, have no contact with children, be subject to searches to ensure he doesn't draw obscene material, and take a journalism ethics course. And he was convicted, and one of the grounds, one of the conditions of his uh, uh, probation is that he not do any future artwork that might that might, I'm not a word, that might be considered obscene for three years. This is so chilling of the First Amendment. We want you to at least get a little uh, uh, coverage, get some spinal cord, and give a goddamn, because your own America is being fucked up. When I first saw Mr. Diana's work, I was personally troubled by it. I found it somewhat unsettling. Sure. But to me, it posed a much greater issue because it's not just his comic book that we're talking about we're talking about the entire gamut of first amendment rights and if you cannot be secure in protecting his imagery no matter how offensive it may be then you can have no security that any ideas will be protected the magic of, of miller versus california is that it allows the individual communities to decide for themselves what is decent if if i want to live in pinellas county in uh, 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 an atmosphere where there is some common decency that that's something I ought to be able to do and not have the the, the moral atmosphere of a community like Las Vegas or, or New Orleans or San Francisco or New York and if they they're gonna arrest a man for making cartoons they should take half the television off right People should it make movies then because a lot of that stuff is obscene too right what about yeah, how long did this man get convicted for well he was given three years probation and he's not allowed to draw for three years that's ridiculous, that's ridiculous. That's ridiculous yeah. i personally think the media does influence us because they choose to put on te television what they want us to see and as for picking up a book that's our choice and at reading comics it's not like it's being in the st pete times or anything the man is getting across to to getting out anxiety on paper. This probably really bothers him about children being molested. And that's his only way of getting it out, is to make comics of it, to make um, a joke of it. The media makes jokes of everything. It was intended to be adult material, and I wouldn't give it to kids at all. Your intent was that it never get in the hands of children, and my understanding, I don't want to put words in your mouth. But... Yeah. That it portrays rape, murder, drug use, satanic ritual and child abuse. This is something you can see on any given TV channel on any given day. It's all on for, uh, you know, regular daytime shows. Right. Soap operas, everything. This is what this whole society of Largo watches. I'm sure half of them watch soap operas. Every one of these things that he wrote about is on any soap opera you watch. Somebody's going to do something regardless. You know, if they're sick and ready in the mind that they're going to go out killing people, they're going to go out doing it. It's not because uh, they can blame it on anything, just like Son of Sam tried to blame it on his dog. You know, it's, it just ain't right. And you can write about and say about anything you want. Right. Supposedly, the only thing you can't do in this country is threaten to kill the president. So, are you sorry for what you did? Do no. you apologize in any way for what you did? I never intended to offend anyone, and I'm not ashamed of my artwork at all. So, if I could do it all again, I would, I think, do it the same.